2021 was a pretty fantastic year for JRPGs, and I'm sure you played at least a few of the games on screen right now. But I guarantee you there's at least a few JRPGs I'll be sharing in this video that you've never heard of or didn't play. But you really should have. You really should have. So here are five hidden gem JRPGs from 2021 you absolutely need to check out. Probably my favorite game on this list is Fuga Melodies of Steel. It was developed by CyberConnect2, you know, the team that makes all those Naruto games. Also, this is their first self-published game, which is pretty cool. At a quick glance, it might just look like furries driving a tank, and while that is mostly true, there's much more to this game that makes it worth playing. The story centers around a group of children trying to find their parents that were captured in a war that was clearly inspired by World War II. Fuga has a very odd yet compelling juxtaposition of cute animal kids killing soldiers. Despite the rather simple presentation, the narrative really tugs on your heartstrings and you want to keep playing to see what happens next. As far as gameplay goes, it's an interesting mix of turn-based combat and simulation. Most of your time will be spent in these tank battles. In each chapter, you'll follow a linear path and it looks kind of like a board game map where you can rest at towns, restore your health, explore dungeons, and much more. The combat itself is very similar to rock, paper, scissors. Each enemy is weak to a certain attack and each of your characters can do one of a certain kind of attack. So you'll be constantly swapping out different characters to make sure you're doing the right amount of damage and hitting enemy weak points. As you recruit more characters, your team will grow and you can swap them out to do even cooler unique attacks. Now between battles, you'll spend action points or AP in your tank. Here you can improve the tank in battle by upgrading your weapons and armor, grow food, cook food to help you improve your stats in battle, bond with characters, and much more. There's also simple dungeon crawling segments that aren't all that amazing, but it really helps mix up the gameplay and keeps things fresh. I have to say, I think that's Fuga's greatest strength is always mixing things up and it always keeps you interested. You'll be fighting a tank battle and then just when it feels like you're getting a little sick of it, there'll be an intermission where you can talk with your team back in your tank and again, if you wanna go explore a dungeon, you can. And it's also a really great dollar to hour value. Now I know everybody doesn't look at games like that, but for only about 20 or $30 to get 15 to 20 hours out of a game at this quality, I think it's totally worth your money and time. Now I would be shocked if very many of you have heard about Light Fairy Tale. It was made by a small indie team and is very much a PS1 era throwback JRPG. Personally, I love this low polygon look. There's something so nostalgic about it. It just brings me back to that golden age of JRPGs. It really feels like an older game made with modern technology. Now in the game, you live in this industrial looking city where the sky is covered by giant plates and you and your friends want to escape the city so you can see the sky for the first time. Light Fairy Tale has great world building. Even though the maps are pretty small and the game is fairly short, it gets you really into the world with the different character interactions and just as you explore it and seeing the different parts of the city. Also, as I played it, it became very clear that this game was heavily inspired by Final Fantasy VII. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but it was very noticeable. You can just see by looking at the locations that it looks very much like Midgar, and even the music itself sounds exactly like tracks from Final Fantasy VII. For the combat, it's fairly basic and simple. It's a turn-based one where each character has unique moves that you can perform, and the cool thing though is that you can fast forward battles if it's a little slow for you. To me though, the main selling point of Light Fairy Tale is its overall look and vibe. I just loved being in this world and walking around and exploring it. It just felt weirdly nostalgic even though I had played the game for the first time. And the game is fairly cheap and fairly short. Right now it's got two parts that you can play, so you can kind of check out the first part to see if you like it. It's not a big time or money investment if you're not too into it, but if you are, there's another part waiting for you to play both on PC and on consoles. One of the more surprising sequels this year was The Caligula Effect 2. In the game, you're in this sort of Matrix-like world, or I guess in more modern terms, a metaverse. Now we have a new North Star. To help bring the metaverse to life. And your desires are granted there, but it's not the real world. You're not living in reality. So your character and your friends want to restore order and get everybody back to reality. To be honest, the story and characters are a little bland, uninteresting, and most of the story segments were really long-winded. Thankfully, the Caligula Effect 2 makes up for this with its gameplay. Its combat system is super interesting and unlike anything I've ever seen before. You choose your attacks and you can kind of see how they play out before you actually execute them. You can see if your attacks will miss, how you can chain combos together, how you can juggle enemies, it's super fun. And you'll constantly be getting new characters so it's really neat to see how they all pair together and how you can keep combos going as long as possible. 
Now, speaking of long, the dungeons felt a little too long at parts, especially because the combat is just so involved and there's so much you need to do just to get through a single battle. That being said, they're still fun to explore. It's neat to kind of explore and see what you can find there. And I think what really helps is the music. The music was surprisingly good. It's kind of a mix of high energy J-pop with some hip hop influences, and I did not expect to enjoy it as much as I did. Now, when you're not dungeon crawling and going through story moments, you can do side quests around the city. You can explore, you can go to your school, and one of the more odd side quests that I found was trying to help a teacher out that was accused of hitting on a student by a student. To say the least, Caligula Effect 2 doesn't shy away from more sensitive story moments. If Fantasian was released as a console game, I don't think it would be on this list, but because it was released as an Apple Arcade exclusive, I think a lot of people skipped it. And I get it, as JRPG fans, we were burned by mobile games for so long, but this is one you gotta play. What makes Fantasian so special is that it was created by some of the original minds behind Final Fantasy, Hironobu Sakaguchi and Nobuo Uematsu. Sakaguchi is considered the creator and the father of Final Fantasy, and Uematsu created the soundtracks for Final Fantasy 1 through 10 and contributed to others along the way. Now, they've worked together on a lot of JRPGs over the years, like Last Story and Blue Dragon, so that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to create magic, but this really feels like a genuine, awesome, golden era JRPG. One of its more unique features is the environments. They're made from real dioramas that were crafted in real life and then scanned in. They have this really unique look to them and it's just so cool and unlike any other game I've played. And it also has a pretty fun turn-based combat system. One really unique feature that stands out that I've never seen in a game before is that if you don't want to fight battles, you can kind of save battles for later in this little container and then fight all the enemies at once. If you just kind of want to spend your time exploring or fighting, whatever you want to do, it gives you that freedom, which is really nice. Now, Fantasian is a huge game. Originally, it was released as two separate parts, but together you're looking at 60 to 80 hours easily. And again, I know people don't want to play with touch controls, but if you want to play with something like a backbone controller that you can hook your phone into or just straight up use something like a PlayStation 4 controller, Fantasian does support that. And also, if you're looking for an insane value, if you haven't subscribed to Apple Arcade already, you can get a free trial and probably beat this game for free for how many hours it's offering. That's a crazy value. And again, even if you start paying for it and you it takes you two months to beat it, 10 bucks for a game that's 60 to 80 hours and with this kind of lineage and quality, you really shouldn't pass up on Fantasian. Blue Reflection Second Light might be the coziest JRPG you'll ever play. In the game, you play as a high school girl lost in a mysterious world with other high school girls. None of you are sure how you got there and you're all trying to get back home. It's just so wholesome. All the girls are sharing their dreams and their desires and you get to know them through character specific side events. Now in the game, your home base is in this school. You live at this school and you'll slowly build it up and add facilities and make it a home. And it was really fun to constantly be adding new features to the school and see what they all did. And for those of you that like this, you can change the outfits of all the different characters. It's pretty cool to see what's available. Now, Blue Reflection Second Light has a great turn-based combat system. A bar will fill up and then you can assign an attack, and the more times you attack, you can do better attacks the next turn. It's also really fast-paced and fun. And also throughout the battle, you'll be slowly building up a super meter that allows you to transform into a superhero-like character with more powerful attacks. And what I think I enjoy most about this is that you get in and out of battles so quickly. Sometimes turn-based combat systems can be really sluggish and they can take forever, but this one you're in and out no problem. And if this feels familiar to more recent Atelier games, well, it's the same developer Gus, so that makes a lot of sense. Overall, Second Light just has a totally relaxing vibe. You're not trying to save the world, it's not super dark, it's just easy breezy and lighthearted fun. And also, you don't need to play the first game to understand it. You can jump in fresh right here, no problem. Now, if you want to know what the best JRPGs of 2021 were, make sure you're subscribed because coming up next is my top five JRPGs of 2021 and you won't want to miss it. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.